Coming up, Suji volunteers venture into the flooded region of Kaohsiung to look after victims of Typhoon Maggie. We look into the obstacles surrounding Penghu's possible low-carbon island plan to harness wind power. Welcome to Da Headlines. I'm Mary Lee Shioda. Thank you for joining us. The first to arrive and the last to leave is the motto of Tsuji volunteers doing disaster relief. In post-typhoon relief efforts for Megi, Tsuji volunteers across the island have been conducting home visitations to ensure communities are looked after. In Jiayi and Kaohsiung, volunteers began venturing out to check on the effects of residents. It's thanks to Tsuji's mission of calming hearts and minds that many seniors' worries were eased. Separating into nine teams, Tsuji volunteers from Kaohsiung head into Xizhou District's flooded region to visit typhoon victims. They encounter military personnel as well as sanitation workers from the EPA cleaning up after Maggie. It seems every home has suffered flooding. <laughs> Mr. Shi's father, who was asleep in the first floor bedroom, didn't know flood waters had seeped into the house. Thankfully, their next door neighbor's elderly grandmother, who is 97, slept on the second floor bedroom and wasn't affected physically, just scared. <laughs> Local residents are happy to see the volunteers in blue and white. Thank you. I don't need the gift, just the charm. You can save the gift for those who need it more. We are still quite young. Just your blessings will be enough for us. Filled with enough blessings to go around, Miss Yang wants to share her good fortune with others less fortunate. It's this type of camaraderie that helps to establish further bonds in this stressful time. Over in Jiayi, Tsuji volunteers have also mobilized to comfort typhoon victims. They visit senior Ho, whose roof blew away and whose home was flooded. We can't spare to see you like this. Don't cry. You are still doing well. Don't cry. <laughs> Mr. Huang's roof is also damaged, but it's because his neighbor's roof flew off and smashed into his that the hole appeared. Mr. Huang was still dwelling on this misfortune until Tsuji volunteers comforted him. In post-typhoon relief efforts, Tsuji fully mobilizes their volunteers to help seniors get their lives back to normal as soon as possible. Continuing with post-mega disaster relief, among the flooded areas of Kaohsiung, Tianliao's Xiaogunshui and Moon World were pretty severe. Local residents were without power and water for three days. Hearing of their helplessness, Tsuji volunteers reached out to comfort them in this time of need. Hundreds of Tsuji volunteers arrived by bus to Kaohsiung's Tianliao on this day, ready to conduct their typhoon relief mission to comfort residents in these parts. Tianliao was flooded, and Yuechou Road's flood waters were about 122 centimeters high. Xiaogunshui was about 150 centimeters. We had a meeting to discuss how to visit and console 379 households. As floodwaters had just receded, when residents saw the volunteers, they couldn't help but vent their frustration. On behalf of our master Zheng Yan and all of the Tsuji volunteers, we present this gift to you as a form of blessing. Water and electricity supplies have yet to be restored to this area. Thus, Tsuji's comfort at this time was much needed, as residents look forward to restoring their homes as quickly as they can. Since you are here, I will take you on the tour. Miss Wu has lived in Tianliao's Moon World for the past 40 years, and this is the worst flooding since the 88 floods. It's still muddy. How can I clean this? Water and electricity have not returned yet. <laughs> On his wall, Mr. Zhu has recorded down flooding instances in more recent years. Living in Xiaogunshui of Kaohsiung's Tianlao district, Mr. Zhu feels hopeless when talking about the flooding. 
The government has not done a good job at water and soil conservation. It has caused the riverbed to widen as the silt deposits build up. The river now holds less water, causing flooding to become more severe. Maggie severely affected 13 households in Tianliao's Xiaogunshui, where flood levels reached the second floor. This family's car parked in front of the house was submerged underwater. What will you do now? It will take 3,000 NT dollars to clean up the flooded car. 71-year-old Chen Huang Jinzhi and her family of seven are unable to spare the money to fix it. In their moment of crisis, city volunteers arrived to help. Suzy volunteers not only brought material goods, but also Master Jenyan's condolence letter to ease their comfort, in hopes of providing enough love and support to help them rebuild their disaster-torn home. After Typhoon Maggie left Taiwan, Suji volunteers in Taipei also began cleaning up communities damaged by the typhoon and visiting homeless people to find out how they are doing. Past experience taught shops in Ulan, New Taipei City, to be prepared for the recent typhoon. Although some shops still suffer damage, it wasn't so serious, with friends coming to help with the cleanup. He is a Swiss uncle because he came to help with the cleanup. In Chinese, uncle is homophone for help. Typhoon disaster doesn't lead to more pessimism. Volunteers go from door to door to understand their conditions. When they meet soldiers, it's like meeting old friends. You're our future, so we see our future. So we must be more compassionate and we can become smart. City volunteers in Jilong are delivering goods and comforters to a center for the homeless before the next typhoon comes. Typhoon Maggie has gone, but there's another one coming, so we have prepared special supplies for them. City volunteers in Taipei are involved with cleaning up fallen branches and leaves in Sisong Elementary School and in local parks. They knew it was a typhoon day, so they came out and volunteered their help. Cixi brothers and sisters called me last night, asking me what time they could come to clean up the park. Cixi volunteers in Ilan give drinks and hot meals to the staff of Thai Power. <laughs> While the typhoon moves further away from Taiwan, this disaster has brought many people closer together. Suji provides assistance wherever needed. Recycling volunteer Wu Li Yu saw her home in Fulong badly damaged from the recent typhoon. This caused great problems for her family living there. Fortunately, Suji helped them find a new home and even helped the family settle into the new location. After the typhoon, recycling volunteer Wu Li Yu's house in Fulong on Taiwan's northeast coast was badly damaged as roof tiles were blown away and power was out all night. This led her mother, Mrs. Wu, to fear for her safety throughout the night. Last night, I cried all night. The two of us held each other and cried. With her husband suffering a stroke and her mother panicked by the disaster, Suji volunteers immediately came to the rescue to help them find a new apartment to rent. They even sent a truck to move the family's possessions. The damage from the typhoon was quite serious, and without help from Suji volunteers, they really wouldn't know what to do, so they are very grateful that you came here to help. At the beginning, we thought that it is the start of the rainy season, and if you want to rebuild the roof, it would be very inconvenient at this time. The father suffers mobility issues because of a stroke, as we should at least make them feel secure in both body and mind. Oh. 
Volunteers help move furniture and pack up luggage with one volunteer, Wu Sui Pen, originally scheduled to have cataract surgery today. Because of the typhoon, the schedule was adjusted and she was able to help this family. The typhoon delayed my surgery, which was scheduled for today until next week. I think that this is very good as it allows me to help this family. <laughs> All volunteers help the family find a new home across the street from Zuji's retreat office, ensuring more care, as well as a safe place for this family impacted by Typhoon Maggie. Penghu's Low Carbon Island project from 2011 to 2015 is a major part of the development of alternative energy in Taiwan. The plan calls for generating 96 megawatts of electricity through wind power, and though it has failed to reach this target overall, in winters, wind power accounts for 33% of the island's energy needs. If all renewable sources are accounted for, some 40% of Penghu's daily electricity demand can come from low-carbon renewable sources. However, the future expansion of renewable energy sources in Penghu have been plagued by a number of difficult issues, such as installing a submarine cable allowing this energy to be transferred to Taiwan. Penghu is located in the Taiwan Strait and has a coastline that stretches nearly 400 kilometers, with 90 scattered islands dotting an area where northeasterly monsoon winds blow nine months a year. This is the location of Taiwan's best wind farm. This is Penghu's Zhongtun Wind Farm, the earliest wind farm in Taiwan, where eight large white wind turbines have become a sightseeing landmark. Since the Zhongtun Wind Farm started operating in 1993, we have generated more than 200 million kilowatts of electricity. And given the amortization of equipment, we have been creating surplus profit. In addition to the Zhongtun Wind Farm, there are six other wind turbines in Hushi Township's Beiliao village. The Low Carbon Island project, aside from the six wind turbines installed there, the plan also calls for another 11 units, with wind power probably accounting for about one-third of Penghu's power generation. Summers in Penghu include lots of sun and hot temperatures, which cause the wind to continually flow. Penghu's wind and solar energy resources far exceed that of other parts of Taiwan, as 8% of the energy is associated with wind and 2% solar. The benefits of such carbon reduction are equivalent to saving 13 Da'an forest parks a year. Solar energy and wind power probably account for 40 million kilowatts, which accounts for 10% of Penghu and your power supply. And in winter, when power consumption drops, wind power will account for more than 33% of power supplies. Upon entering the Chen San Plants Power Dispatching Center, we can view this monitor to see how the power is generated. At the beginning of this year, Penghu renewable energy generation ratio could reach up to 40 percent in a single day, which still leaves room for Taiwan's future green energy development. Penghu's wind power generation and low-carbon island project is in fact more ambitious than the plan that is currently enacted. The first plans were for 11 wind farms with a total of 84 wind turbines with an annual output of 500 million kilowatts of electricity, which is sufficient supply for use by 130,000 families with an output value of 1.2 billion, which would have the carbon reducing effect of more than 1,000 down forest parks. The biggest key to developing this renewable resource is a submarine cable which in summer could allow power from Taiwan to reach Penghu and travel the opposite way in the winter. But five years after implementing the plan, Penghu still only has its original 14 wind turbines. What has held this plan back? The submarine cable requires shore-based development in both Yunlin and Penghu. Yunlin residents had some doubts and reservations, which we're still trying to dispel. 
Once this submarine cable is completed, we will accelerate the development of Penghu wind power generation. Penghu's wind power generation capabilities are being held back by the lack of accompanying measures. However, even offshore wind turbines may encounter the same problem. Though many continue to dream about the future of wind power, and there just may be the possibility of a new model for cooperating between the government and private enterprises. As for encouraging private investment, if the government can provide support and relax policies governing this, the private sector is willing to invest. How to allow the private sector to provide funding to be more of a force allowing SMEs to make corresponding investments. In addition to onshore wind farms, offshore development is also on the horizon as Taiwan's largest green energy development case. The experience of Penghu has definitely taught us that its low-carbon island plan is a good blueprint for the future. Our next installment will move from shore to ocean to see just what type of renewable energy options are available. Tsuji has been helping many students from impoverished families in Jiangsu's Shuyang County since 2007 when it established a special class in the area, teaching students work skills that allowed them to increase their family income. This year, Shanghai Tsuji volunteers divided into 18 teams, with a total of 69 people visiting 150 families of scholarship recipients. <laughs> Volunteers had to spend six and a half hours to travel from Shanghai to Jiangsu Suyang County, bringing care and love to the family of each scholarship recipient. <laughs> Shen Haoyun's grandmother was choked with emotion and poured out her heart as soon as she saw Cixi volunteers. She has had a difficult life because she has to take care of her ill husband as well as raise her three grandchildren alone. <laughs> Cixi <laughs> volunteers always bring happiness to people who have had a difficult life and even help build their confidence. Since Wu Hanxue has received assistance from Cixi for many years, she made a promise at the scholarship awarding ceremony. I have made a promise to a Tsuji brother that I will begin my journey of volunteering when I go to college in September next year. Tsuji has continued to assist local students with education and give them chances to learn some work skills since 2007, when he established the first special class for impoverished students in Shuyang. Though only Zhiji offers this kind of class, I think their dedication can attract more people's attention, allowing children from impoverished families to have more opportunities to learn. In 2016, Cixi's scholarship recipients included students from Hongxing Junior High, Jianling Junior High, and Zhengde Junior High. With Cixi's moral guidance, volunteers hope these students can further spread Cixi's love to the needy. Cixi Academies of Humanistic Studies in Canada are open for the new school year. Their curriculum includes Chinese language and moral education, subjects that are highly welcomed by students and parents. On the first day of the new school year, Cixi volunteers are welcoming students at the door, but it looks more like a family reunion. I sincerely hope all the parents will grow up with their children, and after they have grown up, you'll know this path isn't wasted. The Cixi Academy in Mississauga started with 70 students, but now there are over 200 of them. This shows the support from the Chinese community. Even though a new principal is taking charge, the educational ideals will remain the same. We're grateful to all the students and we also respect all of them. The teachers will love your children with great love. The Cixi Academy in North Toronto opens today and is also very lively. The graduates put on the volunteers' vest to help with opening. 
It allows the parents to feel at ease. Ciji 呢，它是这个来自于 Ciji is from Taiwan, and I always feel the level of Chinese language education is higher in Taiwan, and focuses more on Chinese tradition. 的中文教育，它比较注重中国传统的一些东西。Children bid farewell with each other with smiles and look forward to the next class. Hualien Ciji Hospital 707 Performance Troupe presented the legendary bird Sicily at Tongmen Elementary School to teach the students about the danger of chewing beetle nuts. Sister Jero starts the children's drama with a dance. Hualien Ciji Hospital's 707 Performance Troupe performs a story of. The legendary bird Sicily to the students at Dongmen Elementary School in Hualien about not chewing beetle nuts. Many of the kids' parents like to chew beetle nuts. Through this lively performance, it can allow the children to understand the danger and effects of chewing beetle nuts. I think this is very good. Games such as beetle nut magical ball and beetle nut landslide left very deep impressions in the children. I won't chew beetle nuts or take drugs. Furthermore, I can refuse it. According to the Health Promotion Administration of the Ministry of Health and Welfare, Hualien and Taitung counties have the highest ratio of people chewing beetle nuts, and more young people are doing it. I believe that if your teeth are healthy, you can chew correctly, and your body will function normally. Therefore, we are guarding the front line. And hope the children will never chew beetle nuts in their lives, and they can live better lives. We hope children can learn to refuse beetle nut at young age, and tell the adults in their tribes the danger of chewing beetle nuts. Then their tribes can be free from them. In Malaysia, the Ciji Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter started to carry out an assistance program for Indian Malaysian children three years ago, offering free humanitarian classes to them once every two months. In the classes, volunteers eagerly promote environmental awareness to these children, and recently even took them to a recycling station where they can truly experience the joy of doing recycling. This is the humanitarian class, which is held once every two months. The theme of the lesson is environmental awareness. I learned from the lesson that we should eat less meat to save lives. We should also encourage people around us to adopt a meatless diet. Ciji volunteers from Malaysia offer free education for Indian Malaysian children. Apart from emphasizing the importance of humanitarian cultivation, they also provide first-hand experiences. Semua orang ada pakai komputer, okay? Dia pun salah jenis barang elektrik. 接下来应该会有。We may ask the students to bring recyclable resources to the school from their home. We will do this once every week to let them put the idea of recycling into action. To make the planet a better place to live, everyone can start to embrace vegetarianism as well as do recycling to protect our environment. Since 2013, Ciji's Muar branch has helped underprivileged children in Malaysia continue their education through the Happy Campus program. The Smei volunteers also began teaching their recipients Jinx aphorisms to enlighten their minds. We will leave you with these images at the end of the program. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>